Starter Pokemon, one of the most known creatures from the Pokemon universe. Each region has a group of three different evolution lines, but what if every region would get a fourth member? Today we'll be taking a look at this exact challenge, and we'll add one new starter to every single region. Since you guys love these designs so much, I will be making their evolutions as well, but I haven't had the time to make them yet, so enjoy the compilation of our 9 new first stages. Before before we get started on the drawing itself, we need to take a look at what the Kanto starters consist of. We have Bulbasaur which you could see as a dinosaur slash amphibian, we have Charmander who is definitely a reptile, and last but not least we have Squirtle who is also a reptile. Yes, I definitely had to google to make sure that turtles are reptiles. This makes it so we sort of have a group of reptiles with a slight hint of a dinosaur touch that should give us enough information. So let's begin with the drawing. My first thought went out to the electric typing because I could just see this Pokemon line coming into the region by a mysterious egg being found in the power plant and the electric typing just fits the type trio really well. The next thing I thought about was which animal I wanted to make and it didn't take me long to realize I wanted to go into a raptor like design. The only thing that made me hesitant on this decision was that we already have an electric type raptor called Dragosault. This made me think of different creatures, but we did a poll on stream. By the way, we stream all of these drawings here on YouTube, so if you want to have a say in the upcoming starters, turn on your notifications and join the streams. Where the majority of people voted on the raptor as reverence, we then began by constructing his head with a simple circle and added in his body with a few more simple shapes. The key to making your own Pokemon is to lay out a good foundation with simple shapes so you can easily build the details onto them. This is exactly what I did and once I was happy with the overall body shape, I spent some time trying to get the legs and feet to work in the way I wanted them to work. I still think that limbs are one of the hardest things to draw but I do think we actually managed to make them work for this drawing. The most fun part about this challenge is trying to make these new starters fit in the already existing ones. This is also the reason why I had to make sure I didn't overcomplicate the design because Gen 1 designs are always quite simple. Because of this, I didn't add any crazy electrical elements into the design and just went with only a bolt like tilt to function as that link. The other thing that would carry our to typing would of course be the color. However, once we added it into the design, it still felt a bit too empty. That's exactly why I decided to bring in the scaly shapes we can also see on Bulbasaur's body. We then then just spend a lot of time trying to get the shading to look similar to the ones used on our beloved Gen 1ers. This is extremely hard to do, but after at least an hour, we did get it to a point where it was actually quite close. The only thing that didn't really look the same was that my liner was way too thin for it to not stand out between the others. I then spent quite some time thickening it out, and this made me check the line width first for the other pieces as well. Zeptor, the Raptor Pokemon. Pokemon. A young raptor with the instinct to race, able to run up to 80 miles and scale trees with ease. It generates static electricity with its feet while it runs, making a trail of electricity that shocks anybody that steps on it. It easily delivers a flurry of thunderous kicks at its opponents. It's even been recorded to be able to throw 100 kicks in a second. The ability Voltage powers up electric type moves when the Pokemon's HP is low. I am extremely happy with the end result of this little dude. It genuinely looks like it could fit straight in between the other three and of course the execution isn't perfect, but I think that someone who has never seen Pokemon before might guess that Bulbasaur might be the odd one in the group. Our next stop are the starters of Johto, where we have Chikorita that's based on a sauropod, Cyndaquil on a possibly extinct Echidna, and Tornadile as a prehistoric crocodile. We decided that their theme is most likely ancient or extinct species and it made it a lot easier for us to find a good fit for their fourth counterpart. At first I decided that a ground typing would be great for this region since one of the prominent features of Johto is of course Mount Silver. This is something we took with us for the entire design process but eventually opted into a different typing at the end. For the animal itself we decided to go with a giant slot called Mag 
Megatherium, which was quite fun to play around with, but we did have to find a way to make it look cute. We started out by giving him a big head and big eyes most starters have as well. You do this to make the Pokemon feel like a baby, which really helps to make it more fitting as a Pokemon you begin your journey with. For the arms he went with some long and slouching ones and this instantly made him feel more like a reference animal. There was one issue that kept him looking like a different animal though, I just wasn't sure how I was going to portray the snout of the Megatherium and firstly fell back onto a more bear like version. Although this did look cute, I didn't want him to look like that and not even a long tail could change his appearance. This made me realize that his snout just wasn't going to work work and after a lot of changes to his face, we decided to go with a much simpler version. We were also still focused on the ground typing and in order to make him feel closer to one, we replaced his tail with some gem like rocks and I also brought these rocks onto his elbows. We then made sure to add some nails to his feet and we finished up the design with some furry hair on the top of his head plus the body markings to his belly and arms. For the colors I was of course still going for the typing we were thinking about the entire time, so we mostly filled up his body with a nice brown coat and a complementary orangey yellow. The accent color for the rocks was an orange and the finishing touch was the yellow color for his eyes. Although this color palette is quite fitting for a Megatherium based Pokemon, it doesn't really fit in with the others, which is of course what we are going for. This is the reason why I ended up going with the shiny colors I gave him, because they made him look much closer to an ice type and I think that does still work better with Mount Silver as well. I will say that the shading for this one wasn't as good as the drawing prior to this, but I think we managed to improve it with the next two. Minotarium, the sloth Pokemon. These Pokemon link up their arms to form a chain of many Minotherium and swing from tree to tree to get around faster. They have even been spotted to use this technique as an attack. Minotarium's favorite hobbies include sleeping, eating, lazing about and sleeping even more. They are very lazy creatures who spend most of their life unconscious. Its ability Arctic powers up ice type moves on the Pokemon. Pokemon's HP is low. Although this design is extremely cute, it is however my least favorite of them all. This might be because I was actually rushing to get this one done on the day I was working on it. I am not even sure if it blends in properly with the other ones from this region either. It is now time for my favorite region ever, Hoenn. I still think that aside from all the amazing Pokemon we got in this gen, we also got the best starter trio too. I don't know if it is this way because of nostalgia, but to me these starters are all a 10 out of 10. Quite big shoes to fill to be honest. The theme of them feels a bit more casual and seems to focus more on regular animals. We have Trico as a lizard, Torchic as a fiery chicken and Mudkip as a mix between an axolotl and a mudskipper. Our goal would be to bring in another regular animal species and to focus a lot more on the rendering style too. Hoenn is said to be a region with quite a few different climates. One of them is said to be a tropical one, which should be somewhere around Fortree City if you look at the vegetation in that area. My idea for an animal was to have an ape that has been discovered somewhere in those bushes. The first species of ape that came to mind was an orangutan, but in the end we did decide to opt into a gorilla to make its new typing work. I really wanted to make a special attacking ape, which would be a fun way to differentiate from a physically strong looking gorilla for example. The best typing for this was going to be Psychic, but we already have Oranguru, so this made me hesitant to going into that direction. I did try to cheat my way through it by making it into a fairy type, but as I mentioned once before, sometimes it's just best to follow the direction where your design wants to go to and not forcing a specific type onto it. The body itself wasn't actually that difficult to draw, and we went for a sitting pose with a cute choppy 
belly to make you want to cuddle him even more. We then gave him some lengthy arms because I always feel like apes just have unusually long arms. One of the few things we struggled with for this piece was that I didn't know what to do with his face and if I wanted to bring patterns onto the design. For the last point we actually went back and studied the original starters for a while. This gave us the information that we just need to keep it simple and let the color do the work for us. If you look at Trico for example, the only reason he looks like a grass type is because of his color. If you change this, it can instantly look like a different typing. This was a huge breakthrough for this drawing and finally made us able to continue. His face and expression probably changed around 20 times before we were happy and we then just had to add a little bit of fur on his head and arms to finish up the design nicely. We once again spent some time trying to get the liner to get the right thickness and we went for a completely pink color palette with of course a nice light blue accent color for his eyes. I also made sure to keep looking at the original starters while I was doing the shading and highlights for this piece. Psy Ape, the Psychic Ape Pokemon. These Pokemon are often lost in thought, trying to unlock the full potential of their mind. It seems that they are only able to use a small fraction of their power. Because of this, Psy Ape need to be immensely cared for, such as feeding and cleaning them. Its ability Metatype powers up Psychic type moves when the Pokemon's HP is low. This drawing is definitely high on the list of my best drawings. I think it is an extremely cute design and it also has an insane amount of potential once it evolves. By the way, please let me know if you want to see these evolutions because it would be sick to build these concepts out even further. I still have a long way to go to render in the same style as Pokemon, but I feel like it blends in decently well with the other Pokemon. Is it a 10 out of 10 like them? Probably not, but I am still really happy with this little dude. For the final region of today we're taking a look at Sinnoh. Someone in my chat reminded me of the reference of this starter trio, which revealed that they were a bit more interesting than just different animals. We have Thirdwig who is based upon the world turtle, we have Chimcha who is inspired by the monkey king, Wukong, and we have Piplup who is based upon Poseidon, but this doesn't really show until its final evolution. This meant that we had to find a god slash mythical creature that either is part animal or just combine one with an animal. We spent the first few minutes theorizing in which direction we could go for this piece and we ended up in the direction of Medusa or at least a half snake have human concept. My idea for this Pokemon would be a similar line like Snivy, but instead of losing limbs when evolving, I felt like the final evolution should be the one with arms. This resulted in only having to draw a cute looking snake for our first stage. The perfect typing for our concept would indeed be poison, but I didn't want to make another purple poison type, so I went with the radioactive poison color instead. The body itself wasn't anything too difficult either and the only thing we had to put more effort towards was making everything fit the same perspective. I did also think of making this starter feel a bit more fierce, but I felt like this wouldn't work as well for beginning trainers, so we will keep that idea for its possible evolution. I did however want something to hint at that fierceness in the design, which made me give him a pattern of a skull to his face. The cuteness of the design was mostly achieved by giving him some big eyes, tiny teeth and a happy little tongue. For the colors we indeed went with a radioactive green with a nice golden touch for his accent color. I also think that the yellow eyes look nice in the palette, but the pink we use for his tongue really brings in the contrast this design needed. For the shading we mostly tried to use similar techniques of Sugimori's art, but man, this guy probably has superpowers with the way he manages to make that work for his pieces. Boy Sizzle, the Gorgon Pokemon. This Pokemon sprays a poison that is invisible to most eyes, including humans. 
happens. This poison causes terribly painful burns to the skin if it comes in contact with it. The poison also ruins fingerprints for an extended period of time. The only reliable treatment to the wounds caused by Poisizzle's poison is the ice from a vanillite. Its ability toxin powers up poison type moves when the Pokemon's HP is low, and its hidden ability Petrify lowers the speed with one stage of every opponent on the battlefield when this Pokemon comes into battle. I genuinely think this is another great design, and I would love to see where we could take it with its evolutions. Mm. I also think it's rendered decently well, but I still have a long way to go to be honest, because you can just tell which one I made. I created a brush head with all my favorite brushes. I use each of them with every drawing that I make, so if you want to draw in the same style as me, I recommend checking out my website. For only 5.99 euros, you can get the Procreate brush set, which you will be able to use in Procreate. It includes an amazing line art brush, a highlight brush which instantly makes your pieces look a lot better, and many other fantastic brushes. I also want to have a written down version of how to create Paradox Pokemon, that's why I created this step by step guide. It's easy to follow and I added a bunch more tips you can use while drawing. You will also get the work files of the two Paradox Pokemon we created. And I added two work files with just a line art so you can practice coloring and shading. This guide is also available for 5.99 euros on my website. But since I thought you guys might be interested in buying it together with the brush set, I made it into a combi deal for only 8.99 euros for the both of them. That is a 25% discount. So I know what I would do. <laughs> As usual we first have to take a look at the already existing starters of Unova. We have Snivy who is based upon a snake and will evolve into an emperor. We have Tepic, which is of course a pig, that evolves into a Chinese general. Last but not least we have Oshawott who is based on an otter and will evolve into a samurai. This meant that we don't really have a theme under the animals but an overruling theme of different types of warriors. We began by figuring out the concept of our new starter and started brainstorming on which warrior type would be an interesting fit for this trio. We ended up going with the Spartans and decided quite quickly on which animal we could pair with that. Instead of choosing a simple animal, we thought it would be cool to use a minotaur like build. This resulted in us making a humanoid version of a bull, but that is really something that Pokemon likes to do a lot themselves, so I think it is actually quite fitting. For the drawing itself we started with a big sphere for his head and built a top heavy body under that. We also played around with a lot of different accent elements for his body, but in the end decided to go with some cape like fur on his shoulders and by using a simple belly patch. The reason why we gave him that type of fur was that the design did look like a minotaur, but the Spartan reference wasn't visible at all. Although this isn't completely necessary for first stage starter Pokemon. On, I do think it's good to have some elements that could be linked to when it evolves. This is exactly why we added in the mohawk and why we gave him a helmet like pattern on his face. We did think about extending it into an actual helmet, but I'm not a huge fan of giving Pokemon real items on their designs, hence why we just went with a pattern. Even though the design itself was starting to look pretty nice at this point, it still had one huge flaw. The eyes I gave him were way too big and they stood out like a sword thumb between the other starters from this region. I believe we spent around 30 minutes trying to fix this issue and the end result looks okay but I definitely think it could still be improved big time. For the colors we went with a black bull palette with a nice red touch for the accent color. This palette would be a nice link to the wanted typing which was the dark type. Minotaur, the dirty fighter pokemon. These pokemon are born with a fighting spirit but lack any sort of professional training. This makes it so it uses brute strength and dirty tactics to win its battles. It will charge into opponents with its toughest steel skull and send them flying, however its horns aren't developed enough to do any harm. Its ability corruption powers up dark type moves when the pokemon's hp is low. I will say that this is my least favorite design of all the first stages we made for this challenge. I do however think it blends in decently well with the others, but 
but I will just have to do better on the designs of its evolutions. The next region we'll be taking a look at is of course Kalos. This starter theme is once again a bit more interesting than simple animals. Because we have Chespin who is based upon a warrior slash tank, Fennekin who is based upon a mage, and Froki who fits into a rogue or assassin kind of role. This means that we have a set of Pokemon who clearly fit the RPG theme, where they were simply mixed with already existing animals. It didn't take us long to figure out the RPG class for our drawing, and we decided to go with the healer. Our first draft for this was to use a marsupial kind of build, and we spent quite a lot of time trying to make this work. I kept on adding in details, and tried to make the body proportions look okay, but it only looked more and more like a Bugs Bunny character. This was the exact reason why we just gave up on this version, and decided to go with a completely different animal instead. I will admit that I was quite tired during this part of the stream and for sure was at the brink of giving up. I wanted to go into a more lizard-like direction, but no matter how hard I tried, everything just looked horrible. In the little anger I felt, I rushed a tiny little sketch with the idea I had for this Pokemon and to my surprise, it actually looked pretty nice. We were then able to finally envision a good starter design and began with the transformation of the sketch. The arms we used there felt way too close to human arms and this looked completely disturbing together with the T-pose I gave him. This made us change them into thinner and more amphibian versions. We then worked on the details of his face where we tried a few different ideas. At this point it looked a bit like a catfish, so I tried to bring in a typical whiskers those fish have, but this just once again made it look too humanoid, hence why we just went with the little stripes as nose. The next change we brought onto him was a big glowing orb, the same one anglerfish used to hunt down their prey. Our Pokemon wouldn't use it for that function though, and instead would have that as his healing tool. After making some slight adjustments to his body proportions, and adding in a belly pack, pattern, we decided that the eyes looked too creepy and that they didn't work too well with the rest of the elements. This was the reason we changed the pupils into amphibian eye slits. For the line art we still used the thicker lines and filled up some corners with some extra thick lines. The colors were going to be a perfect fit for the fairy typing and I loved how much they made our Pokemon look like an axolotl as well. We used a nice pink for its main body color and brought in a lighter pink for the belly pattern. Although I absolutely love this mix of the same colors, it wouldn't stand out enough without a complete different color in the palette. This is why we added a light blue for all the parts that would be able to light up, like his orb, eyes and the little tail we gave him. Last but not least we worked on the rendering, where we probably made one of the best Pokemon renders we have done in like ever. Amphelion, the nursing Pokemon. The bulb sprouting from its head holds extraordinary powers. It is able to heal terminal illnesses by simply hovering the bulb above its patient. You will always find at least one Amphelion in Pokemon centers, though they are only called upon for emergencies, as using their bulb is extremely draining on themselves. Its ability enchanted powers up fairy type moves when the Pokemon's HP is low. This Pokemon has to be one of my favorite Fakemon I have ever made. It is extremely cute and lovable, plus I genuinely love his healing lore too. I still need years of practice to perfect the rendering style, but I can confidently say it blends in nicely with the others, and I'm just super happy with the end result of this guy. The next region we're going to take a look at is Alola. This is a region with a similar theme as the previous one, where we have Rowlet who is based upon an archer, Litinu can be seen as another warrior, and Poplio as another mage. I know people like to see another theme in there, which is entertainment, but I get that for the wrestling Incineroar, the circus act for Primarina, but it just doesn't really connect with the archer Decidueye. I know archers could do a show about their crafts, but to me this just feels like a little bit of a stretch. This is why we once again went with the more RPG route and mixed one of those classes with a cute looking animal. Before we get started on the drawing itself, we had to figure out what our reference would be. For this drawing I wanted to have an animal who would at least make sense in the tropical area what Alola is. It didn't take us long to find a combination of an animal with our wanted 
RPG class, we decided to go for a snail, one who originates from the beaches of the region, as the tank RPG class. I was a little scared to go into a snail design, because this could be seen as a boring animal, but boy was I wrong about that. As usual we started out by making a circle for his head, and we built out a triangular shape behind it, which would eventually transform into its shell. The body itself was quite easy to make, and we simply just added a few swooshes between the already existing body parts. The last detail we added onto the design were the two antennae on the top of his head. The only thing we had to do after that were some simple changes to his eyes, which I I definitely took my time for, because I've seen it ruin way too many of my pieces before. Other than that, we experimented with a few more tiny details, but in the end only went with a pattern on both of his antennae. We did this because otherwise the design wouldn't have enough colors on it. Speaking about the colors, nice bridge, we went with a nice peachy color for his body, and used brown and orange for the shell on his back. The final color was indeed for the pattern we gave him earlier, and we used a red orange for that. I genuinely think we used the perfect color palette for the ground typing we gave the little dude. Snurth, the beach snail Pokemon. This Pokemon uses the rocks it finds on beaches to create and strengthen its shell. The purpose of its shell is a camouflage, and Snurth is very slow on the ground, so they put rocks on their back and sink to the ground to hide from predators. Its ability Tremble powers up ground type moves when the Pokemon HP is low. Okay, not to blow my own horn here, but this could literally be a Pokemon. I'm not completely sure if it fits the starter criteria for 100%, but it definitely looks like a Pokemon. It doesn't stand out between the other starters in this trio, but it for sure looks the best next to Poplio. It is now time for the England based region called Galar. This is definitely one of the more interesting themes I have worked on, since it seems to be the one that actually focuses a lot on the country that it's based upon. We have Grookey who is based upon a musician, we have Scorbunny who is based upon a soccer player, and we have Sabo who fits a certain British pie very well. Every single one of these starters uses a thing that England is well known for. We spent quite some time figuring this one out, since there are so many things to choose from. We eventually went with a chef, like the cooking one, because England is well known for many of the world famous chefs there are out there, especially the one who makes people into idiot sandwiches. <laughs> now that our take at this theme was clear, we did still need to figure out which animal we could combine with it. I know England doesn't have monkeys living in it natively, but I did still think it would be cool if he did use an animal that can be found in the wild there. Although I rarely ever want to make a bird pokemon, because wings are extremely difficult to draw, we decided to go with a puffin. I didn't know this actually, but apparently the UK has a population of over 500,000 puffins in their country. I really thought that this amazing animal would live way farther up north, but now that I think of it, the British environment outside of the cities are perfect for these little birds. The drawing itself wasn't extremely difficult either, and before I knew it I had a puffin like body on my canvas. The only thing that I struggled with for a long time were indeed the wings and the perspective of all the elements combined. The reason for this was that I wanted this Pokemon to be a steel type, and that made me have to think about the wings a lot more than usual. They had to look sharp for the steel typing, but we also had to make sure that it wouldn't look too close to Skarmory's design. And yeah. What does a chef bird do with its wings if it can't pick up anything? This is when I got the idea to make the wings look like actual blades, which would connect both things together beautifully. We went for a pose with one of these blades on his back, as if he was greeting the incoming guest at his restaurant to say, Good evening sir, I will be cooking for you tonight. Mans is just like me with these drawings. <laughs> After making a bunch of tiny adjustments to 
his body and fixing some perspective issues, the design still didn't really feel enough like a chef. One of the reasons why that was the case was because at first I wanted to bring in some markings on his chest just to make it feel like it was wearing one of those typical uniforms. I just wasn't able to make it look okay though, so we eventually just went with an extrusion on the back of his head that simply emulates his chef's head. It was then time to play around with its color palette. At first I brought in a typical orange color for his beak and went with a grey color for his main body part. I was happy with the last color, but the orange just didn't really work for me since we already have two other starters in this trio with orange in their palette. This made us change the orange into a nice blue that works quite nicely with the steel typing we were going for. Chefin, the Iron Chef Pokemon. These Pokemon are mostly calm, but if angered, they will use their knife-like wings to cut and slice at the one who upset it. They use their beak to sharpen their wings by biting down and sliding it through their jaws. Its ability Metallize powers up steel type moves when the Pokemon's HP is low. I am once again super happy with the end result of this piece. It is such an interesting concept and I could really see this Pokemon scream at others just like our man's Gordon Ramsay. I do however think it stands out a little between the other three, but I'm okay with that because I love this concept that much. Alright, let's get started with the final Pokemon region we have so far, Paldea. This trio does have the theme which the Alola starters were already hinting at. We have Sprigatito who falls into a magician, we have Fuel Coco who becomes a singer, and Quexley's evolution is based upon a dancer. Now each of them is also based upon Spanish culture, at least vaguely, because after doing some research, I found a lot of people saying that it felt like some inspiration felt more like things outside of Spain. For my drawing, I will at least go for a Spanish type of entertainment. We once again began with brainstorming for the exact concept we wanted to go for, and someone in my stream chat suggested a bullfighting Pokemon, since bullfighting has been a very well known source of entertainment in Spain. I am definitely not saying it's a good thing in the real world, but it is 100% a very interesting concept for a Pokemon. Now that we had the theme element ready, we had to figure out a typing and the animal. We didn't have too many more typings available since I wanted to make sure that each of the Pokemon I made for this challenge would use a different typing. Does this work well on the already existing trios? No, definitely not. But it does at least make it much more interesting to watch and to create. We brainstormed for quite a while but the pool of optional typings became even smaller because of the secondary typings that were already used for the two evolutions. Fighting and Ghost were these typings, which left us only with the Rock, Bug, Normal and Dragon typings. At first I was hesitant to do this, but we decided to go with the Dragon type starter Pokemon. We did this because we got the idea to make a frilled lizard that could use its frill to anger a Paldean Tauros. The drawing went by pretty quickly, but the only thing that was extremely difficult to pull off was the actual frill on the design. I wanted my Pokemon to look cute and chubby, which meant that the room for a neck wasn't really there. We also had to make sure that the design wouldn't look too similar to the one of Heliolisk. Definitely difficult. This was the reason why we just added a small frill to the back of the Pokemon, which might mean that it could just extend that from its back instead of blowing it up around its neck. For the colors I wanted to do something that wouldn't feel like a typical dragon Pokemon color, because if I gave him a blue color it would look quite similar to the gibble line for example. We tried a few different colors but ended up with a nice desaturated red for its main body parts and of course used a red for its frill. We had to give the frill this color because a red piece of cloth is the well known element from bullfighting. Last but not least we gave him an almost white like red to finish up the design but still let the bright red be the main focus point. Drahator, the bull fighter Pokemon. While Baudet and Tauros will not hesitate to charge Rahator's evolution on sight, Drahator itself has to try really hard to provoke one. Its small size and not intimidating looks make it to have a hard time trying to get a Baudet and Tauros to charge at it. However, if it successfully makes one charge, Drahator's performance will not disappoint. 
Its ability Draconic powers up dragon type moves when the Pokemon's HP is low. Sorry for that accent, I tried. It <laughs> probably sounded horrible. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Before you guys will destroy me in the comments for making a dragon type starter, this guy won't learn Dragon Rage, at least not as a first or second stage. He will also have a slower learning curve than the other starters in this region. He will evolve for the first time at level 22, and he has a lower base stat total than the others too. His final evolution level would probably be around 40, and this would make it so he would be tougher to get through the early levels, but would be a monster for the late game. I do think the design itself is nice, but it leaves a lot of room for a crazy evolution. It's so simple that it really makes you wonder in what direction it will evolve into. It doesn't really blend in amazingly with the other starters, but it might also be because of how I sized them up. I would still love to use this starter however because it's cute well everyone this was the first complete fakemon challenge we did since our paradox adventure it was amazing to see how far we have gotten with our art since then i am extremely proud of these designs and let me know which of them were your favorites today good